Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of the Sonic Frontiers Starfall Tournament. This is a what if series where we take a look at what could happen if the events of Sonic Frontiers were changed to focus around the end using a tournament to set itself free from its cyberspace prison. You'll see the semi-finals take place in this episode, so please enjoy. If you end up liking this video or you've enjoyed the series thus far, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and lets me know that you want to see more of this kind of content. If you really want to support me though, please share this video around with others you think may be interested so that more people can join in on the fun. Now then, let's resume the Starfall Tournament. Having defeated Chaos, Mephilus resides on the arena, holding his newly acquired Chaos Emerald. The time draws near to when I can restore this world to what it should have been. For too long has this false reality continued. I seek to correct what had been done in the distant past. And now, with this Chaos Emerald, I am oh so close to achieving such a goal. And this time, there's no cascade of heroes to stand in my way. <laughs> Shadow glares at this being. He doesn't know enough about him, but he's seen what he's capable of. He possesses strange powers and claimed that he was a god himself. So him having his hands on a Chaos Emerald isn't going to make this any easier for him. Far less impressed from Mephilus' display, however, is Zaz the Zeti, who stands beside Xena at the edge of the arena. Just who do you think you are? Are you forgetting about me? You can't assume you're gonna be the victor when I'm still around. <laughs> and if you don't watch your mouth, Zavok's gonna... He stutters for a moment. Zavok's gonna... He's gonna... He's gonna... Mephilus drifts over towards the Zeti. Whatever power you boast in having is nothing compared to the expertise I possess. You will fall just like your master. Resistance is futile. Oh, why don't you shut up? Get back in that reader so I can teach you a lesson. <laughs> Have you not been paying attention? The only people left to fight in this round and he points towards both Zeti. Are you? The Zetis gasp at one another, realizing he's correct. They must be the ones next to fight in the tournament. I guess I'm gonna have to beat you up. As if. You're the one going home in a box. Hey, that's my line. And Zaz jumps onto the arena, ahead of the announcement from the end. Which does indeed confirm the obvious, stating that the next match will be between Zaz and Xena. Xena leaps onto the arena, facing down her fellow member of the Deadly Six. Zaz starts to smile as he wraps his hands around one another. <laughs> I guess this makes me the new boss. Only if you win. And if you weren't paying attention, Zaz. And Xena runs straight up to him, grabbing him by the throat as she jabs her claws into his torso. I have no intention of staying here as a prisoner. What the? Zaz flails around, his long limbs striking everything around him, including Xena, which causes her to let go. Gah! Don't you dare put your hands on me! Zaz goes to smash Xena in the face with the spiky bracelet around his wrist, but she manages to duck out the way. <laughs> you always were pathetically straightforward. What? What are you trying to say? Oh, nothing. It's not like everyone makes fun of how predictable you can be. <laughs> Zaz continues to flail his arms around, chasing Xena, who keeps hopping out of his way. She can see her words are causing him to become even clumsier than usual. <laughs> You always were the runt, Zaz. Yeah, that's it. I've had enough out of you. As if you're any better. Always crying about your hair getting messed up. I'll show you what messed up looks like. And he swipes at her hair with his claw, removing large strands from it. Oh, you monster! Do you know how long that took? Oh, cry harder! I don't care! Oh, you... 
They end up grappling one another, rolling on the floor as they try to hit each other, slinging juvenile insults between them. Your breath stinks! Your attitude stinks! Zavok never really liked you! As if I would care about that. I have so many adoring fans anyway. Yeah, like what? The pet rocks you paint when you're alone? <laughs> Shadow watches unamused from the sidelines. Mephilus's figure doesn't emote either way. And Infinite continues to thrash in his nice little prison. Eventually, during their tussle, Zaz manages to slap Xena's hand off of him and create some space. She calls out in pain. And Zaz smiles. <laughs> you said that, Tony. But Xena, hunching over her hand, turns over. You fool! You chipped my nail! Your time has just run out, Zaz. What? And Xena flicks her wrists towards Zaz as two beams of energy spew out and wrap around Zaz. Oh, get off of me! But he's picked up into the sky and flung into the side of the arena held there until he's knocked out from the constant charge of electricity. Xena dusts her hands off as Zaz fades away. <laughs> Good riddance. The Deadly Six doesn't need someone like him anyway. I suppose I shall lead. As she exits the arena, Mephilus provides a comment. How very cold-hearted of you. Eliminating your fellow clansmen. It's not as if he could get out anyway. There can only be one winner, and for your information, that one is me. <laughs> we shall see. The end proceeds to announce the next match will be between Shadow and Infinite. Shadow eyes Infinite's capsule as he heads onto the arena. Once Shadow has taken his place at the arena, the end transfers Infinite's red shell to the opposite side of the stage. Almost immediately, once it's over the arena's surface, Infinite starts lashing out at the prison, and it starts to crack. For the first time since he was contained, he's managed to damage its surface. More than that, as his giant arms pound against the insides, he shapens claws at the end of them, and they dig in, prying it apart, until in a sudden burst, Infinite's form surges onto the battlefield, his containment destroyed. Immediately, he lets out a bestial roar. His head shaking towards the sky like a raving beast. But as quickly as he bursted out of his prison, he flings his giant head down to allow his eye to glare at Shadow. And coming along with it, a fast strike from one of his large limbs bellows towards Shadow's current position. He manages to flip to the side to avoid it, and then another arm comes to smash him on the ground, at which he manages to hop over and leap off of. But as he twirls in the air from the last maneuver, he quickly catches a glimpse of a sparkling light, and before he has time to identify what it is, he channels a surge of chaos energy into his palm and punches at the object, managing to deflect it to the side as he falls back onto the ground and it explodes beside him. Some kind of concentrated energy shot. Infinite isn't giving him any opportunity to breathe though. As soon as Shadow has landed on the floor, he's already sending another burst of energy. This time it's a large crystallized spike heading his way. Shadow engages his jet shoes to speed out of the way, and he does. But then Infinite activates the power of the Phantom Ruby, and all of a sudden, his shoes deactivate. He stumbles and almost falls over from the sudden loss of momentum, but he holds his footing. Just in time to block as Infinite sends another one of his giant hands to punch Shadow's body. Shadow easily having his silhouette blocked out by the size of the fist, and yet he's able to strike back and fight against its force, struggling but managing to prevent it from actually squishing him as he pushes it away. Recovering from the blow, Shadow moves his hands towards his wrists to remove his inhibitor rings. He's already seen what this Infinite is capable of, so it's time to go all out. But as he does, he cannot help but notice the uncanny figure of Mephilus observing from the sidelines. The shadowy deity seems to tilt his head as if he knows what Shadow is about to do. And this gives Shadow pause. But that moment of hesitation is enough time for Infinite to smash Shadow with the back of one of his fists, toppling him against the floor once again. Scraping to a halt, 
Shadow manages to conserve enough energy and starts charging into a spin dash. He may not have the rocket skates anymore, but he's still fast on his own. As he worlds towards Infinite, the arena around him begins to warp, as if he's going on a spiral, a loop-de-loop. -loop. The environment doesn't quite make sense. He's going up, down, and all around. But as long as he's heading towards his target, it will be fine. Infinite sends numerous projectiles towards Shadow to try and hit him, but they keep missing. That is until, of course, he causes a wall of lightning to appear in front of Shadow. He rolls straight through it, getting shocked and falling flat onto his face against the floor as a result. Having Shadow right where he wants him, Infinite then amplifies the forces of gravity, pinning Shadow to the ground as he's unable to resist. Furthermore, Infinite then summons meteors to fall from the sky and they will land on Shadow's current position. Shadow clenches his fist as he tries to free himself from the gravitational pull. Time's running short, so he draws upon his energy. <laughs> chaos energy flows from Shadow's body as he enters his chaos boost state, finding himself free of Infinite's gravity manipulations. The distorted jackal sends one of his fists to try and keep Shadow where he is. Shadow sends a wave of energy through his fist towards Infinite, causing it to shatter and fall apart into numerous ruby cubes that tumble away onto the arena. The meteorites as they're on their way to Shadow get intercepted. He homing attacks into the first one, barreling through it, bursting out one side, and as it blows up behind him, he pushes up to the next one, crashing through that. And after this, he shoots out of the meteorite straight towards Infinite's giant head where he manages to send a powerful hit to it, ringing true as it strikes the helmet. Infinite disperses into a swarm of cubes that sway down onto the floor and start coalescing around Shadow. Seeing that he's getting surrounded, he decides to take them all on at once. Chaos! But before he can finish, the air escapes his lungs as he sees standing before him is Maria Robotnik. She looks to him. Shadow. And then more of the Marias show up. He's surrounded by them, a crowd of them all looking at him with that look in her eye from the last time he saw her alive. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> Shadow throws forth a horde of chaos spears and they travel through the faces of Maria, leaving holes in their wake as the rest of her body dissipates into ruby cubes on the floor. The spears themselves continue and cut across Infinite, who is reforming behind them. They leave scarring tears across his warped figure that require numerous cubes to pour into in order to heal. Shadow approaches on foot as Infinite glares at him. Unlike you, I'm not controlled by my past. Infinite's body starts to vibrate, perhaps in anger. Who even are you? Are you the mercenary? Or is this all an illusion too? The infinite monster wails, its head shaking up towards the sky once more as its hands raise up, clawing its head like a child having a panic attack. Shadow watches as the figure starts twitching, echoes of itself splitting off and coming back together with the main body, twitching like something glitching out on a computer program. A pained voice comes from it. I am not... We, I, I'm, I'm... The Phantom Ruby goes off as something seems to be pouring out from the main body and it's trying to rein it back in. Black tar starts pouring away from the midsection of this creature as a smaller silhouette tries to pour its way out. Not weak, I, I'm not going to lose to you again. And pouring out is the form of Infinite as he used to be, mask and all. But attached to his surface are inky tendrils, melted webs attached to his body, fused with the larger form of the monstrous Infinite that looms idle behind him. Now emerged from the beast, the smaller Infinite speaks up. I, I, an infinite. Shadow notices something from the ground raise up as he steps to the side. A pillar of flame tried to burn him from beneath. Two more come out, but he already leapt the way. However, Infinite boosted towards him. Shadow raises his hands to block Infinite's own, but he keeps pushing against him regardless. The ruby's power trickling off of him and those tendrils connecting him to the larger creature behind. 
Infinite's helmet opens up, lined with serrated teeth as he tries to bite at Shadow's head past their arms. Shadow manages to lean back, keeping Infinite off of him. He then pivots his weight, lifting his arms up and then slamming them down so the Infinite smashes chin first into the stone floor. Whilst he's still there, Shadow drops a fist onto Infinite's back, coated in chaos energy. The hit sends a shockwave through the earth and Infinite's form dissipates into phantom rubies. They raise up behind Shadow, but he teleports behind the emerging Jackal so that he can send another attack through him. He swings his fist, coated in Chaos Energy once more, but this time it's halted by a block of ice, freezing his arm solid as the newly formed Infinite strikes him to the side. Shadow takes the damage, but he isn't knocked away, and before Infinite can do anything else, he surges energy through his frozen arm to set it free. At last, you finally met your match. Infinite goes to punch Shadow, he grabs his fist, but from behind, the other Infinite's giant fist had followed in motion, and this strikes Shadow flat on, knocking him back a bit. Infinite then charges forward, throwing his right fist towards Shadow. Once again though, it's backed up by the larger Infinite's own giant claw. Shadow leaps back, evading the smaller fist, but once again getting caught by the large one. Pulling his arms together, Infinite motions for the larger form to squish Shadow between its two hands. Shadow hops up into the air and blocks both sides with his own, sandwiched between them as they try to crush him completely. But this suspends him in front of Infinite's own body. Wake up! You're being puppeteered! Infinite shakes his head. No! I'm in control! Shadow teleports to appear behind the hands as they clap thin air. They retract, preparing for their next attack, as the smaller infinite, hung up by those tendrils, seems to be questioning himself. You'll never look down on me again! Infinite channels his power as he brings his arms together and sends out a pulse of dark energy. Shadow rolls underneath the shockwave, closes the distance to Infinite and leaps at him with, with a chaos-charged fist. However, the larger Infinite's form from behind swats Shadow out of the way, knocking him to the side. <laughs> Shadow stomps his feet into the ground to stop his sliding and quickly throws a chaos spear. It goes far from Infinite, he barely has to move to avoid it. Your wits must be running dr- Infinite's cut off as he's pulled by the strings, quite literally, by the larger Infinite and moved to take this Chaos Spear directly. It goes straight into Infinite's chest as he coughs up some air, both from the pain and the shock. This confirms Shadow's idea. He aimed that Chaos Spear towards the Phantom Ruby itself within the larger Infinite, and as a result, it puppeteered the normal Infinite in front sacrificing him for the attack. So you're a puppet after all. Infinite grasping where the spear struck his chest. No, no, no! His cry transitioning into a monstrous roar as his body dangles loosely, held up only by the tendrils of black connecting him to his monstrous form. Another pulse from the Phantom Ruby warps the stage again, the floor becoming fire as Infinite's smaller body sent towards Shadow as a bludgeon. The heat rapidly getting beyond what's acceptable, Shadow makes his move. You may control reality, but only I control chaos! He enters Chaos Boost once again and summons a solid spear in his hand. The smaller Infinite is sent swinging towards Shadow and he pirouettes out of the way, spinning his spear across his back and then arcing it upwards slicing off one of the tendrils connecting the infinites. The small infinite comes to attack him with a fist coated in electricity. Shadow manages to swat it out the way with his spear and then thrust forward, chopping off another one of the tendrils. He does a homing attack, going past this infinite aiming towards the larger one and the ruby, and instinctively the creature moves the puppeteered infinite in front of Shadow. But this is what he wanted, allowing him to get more swings off chopping off even more of the tendrils, and with a rapid flurry, he removes the last one, causing the small infinite to drop to the ground. In the same motion, Shadow does a 360 in the air on his way down to the ground, and unleashes the spear in his hand, hurtling it straight into the eye socket of the giant infinite. It cascades in, 
with an explosion as the creature yells out in pain and lurches back. Head thrown up as cubes spew out from the wound inside. Shadow then teleports to where the spear is imbued and places his hand on it. BLAST! It detonates in a green glow, disintegrating the giant infinite creature as a rain of cubes hit the surface of the arena and Shadow falls to the ground. Now, lying on the floor is only the small infinite. His form twitching and glitching out, skipping moments. He looks as if he's stuck in an infinite loop, replaying his last moments over and over, sprawled out on the floor, raising his arm and then putting it down again, repeating, Geek. Wee. 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 Near his hand, but out of his reach, lies the Phantom Ruby itself. Shadow walks towards it and picks it up. With it in his hand, he glances down at Infinite. It all ends with this. And he crushes it in his palm, breaking the ruby once and for all. Infinite's body decays into phantom ruby cubes until there's nothing left of him. Shadow himself feels a surge of energy returning to his body, fulfilled by the phantom ruby. A strange purple glow flickers through his body for a moment. <laughs> What a fantastic display! Shadow looks over the sea Mephilus. Such rousing action reminds me of the joys one can find in doing things the old-fashioned way. And with the frivolities out of the way, it's finally time for me to finish what I've spent a lifetime to end. Mephilus opens out his arms. I hope you're feeling refreshed, Shadow. Because where you're going, you'll never have a day's rest again. Shadow prepares himself for the next round. Ah, uh, hello. They suddenly turn to face Xena. I'm next. <laughs> I'm still here, you know. Wh what? You didn't think I was just going to keel over and die or something, did you? <laughs> she hops onto the arena and looks at Shadow. Get out of my way. Hmm. Shadow leaves the stage. Mephilus simply stares at Xena, his body not moving, but his head following her position. Are you just going to stay there and stare, creep? Hurry up. I've got places to be, you know. The dark being drifts to the arena and plops himself down. Finally. Let's just get this over with. The end doesn't need to announce the next match, and although the last fight was quite chaotic, it was all illusionary, so the stage is perfect to go. Xena immediately jumps towards Mephilus and unleashes her energy tether technique towards him. They simply pass through his form like a rock through dust. What? Mephilus holds out the purple Chaos Emerald and its energy rises. Then, from beneath Xena, a copy of Mephilus, perfect in every way, emerges from the ground and grabs her out of the air, pulling her back to the floor. Once she hits the ground, she tries to pull it off of her but another one appears and starts clawing at her legs. Then another one appears on that, trying to climb above it to grab her torso. More and more of his copies keep climbing from the ground, pulling her into it as she screams out, trying to get them off of her. Then the true Mephilus appears in front of her face and grabs her by the neck as she struggles to breathe. Ha! <sighs> A torrent of shadow spews from his wrist into her face and out of her mouth. Her hair flailing upwards behind as the sheer pressure knocks her unconscious almost immediately. The Mephiluses from the floor dissipate and the true Mephilus lets go of her neck, dropping her body limply to the floor. Her eyes rolled up, unmoving. She quickly fades away and he turns towards Shadow. As I was saying, your date with destiny has arrived. All things must come to an end, and the same is true for the Sonic Frontiers Starfall Tournament. Thank you for joining me on this journey thus far, but the next episode will be the last. So please make sure you don't miss it. If you've enjoyed this series, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below, and let me know how you feel. Most importantly, please share this video around so that others may partake in this adventure. I hope you have a great day, and to see you next time. This is the Mighty Emperor, signing off.